That is not a big bug. The, the boots coming out from CLG. I love watching items when they're purchased at the beginning because you just see them fly out all at once. <laughs> it's trying to move my mouse for a minute there and it couldn't stay in the screen. So, there we go. CLG versus Fart and straight to the top. <laughs> I can resist that. Too. We'll see how it starts out. See, normally you're looking at this CLG team with Renekton's follow up and Anivia's initial stun. They've got a very strong invade comp. But Maokai mm -hmm. likes to stick in his own jungle and protect his race. It's not often you'll see him leave there in the first minute and a half. It, it's very understandable because Maokai can just set up his jungle so well that you can invade, but you can also do a lot early on with the proper rooms and masteries, just waiting to blow up a bunch of creeps with saplings. Malkai, by the way, having a very high tier death animation, because the sapling will actually jump around and try and push, and it's very, very sad. <laughs> death animation tier list. That's something I want to see. Mm -hmm. Let it happen. Someone out there will do it. If you can get a death animation tier list written up before the end of the stream, we'll, we'll promote it here. But... It has to, we have to agree uh, to it before we promote it, that's for sure. Uh, there, there's a few obvious ones. Trindamir, for example, very high tier. The sword, like, falling into his like, chest or something. Like, ugh, it's brutal. Irelias do that, too. The blades fly in front of her and then oh, yeah. jab back in her stomach. It's a pretty good one. Mm -hmm. Ari's one is just graceful, the way she uh, falls over and her nine tails cover her dead body. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so. <laughs> so... I, I love the uh, start from CLG, they're helping Snoopa with the damage already. They know that Kalama can just tank some damage. There is a Nif to heal him up and do his thing. And the jungle is set up, Maokai's gonna have a good start. You get Wraith, Wolves, and Blue all fairly quickly and be aggressive and doing his thing. He did get Q at level 2, so he's not gonna go for level two er, a level 2 gank, but wait till level 3 and instead clear his jungle. We've got a repeat of last game then. Kennen versus Renekton top. And it didn't Which really means go well for Kennen. Jarvan, Janna, bot lane. Oh, yes. So they are going to go for kills. They are going to be very aggressive in the bot lane. They did get golems. And this is the time to shine as the Jarvan Janna lane. Right now, Jarvan can pressure. He's got the damage. He's got the CC. He's going on yellow P. Look how much damage he does quite quickly. But if this doesn't work, eventually. Yellow Pete will just constantly pressure down Prom Bear and it will just result in his death. Right there, Prom Bear is already ha to half health. Mm -hmm. And Yellow Pete's not going to let them get any free farm. He's going to be ready there just to harass and make sure that the pressure is there. You can't help but kill. This gimmick's not really going to work. You've got to get a kill before about level 3 or 4 on Soraka because, of course, then her sustain and that armor buff heal becomes just too strong. We do have Malco Going approaching top, sorry, Aim Dodds a Fart gets a good snare and a knockback, Wicked, nice dash despite the flash, Fart does get away, there's mm. most of his life left up, but he's got to chug through one of his three health, four health potions, sorry. But For some reason I can't see Wicked's health potions, how many he has. Hmm. Yeah, it says one for me at the moment. We've got Nocturne down bottom of the game onto Yellow Pete. Nice knockout coming from Java and the Fear won't proc, but the Ignite was used. Yellow Pete did flash as well. So we've still got his summon to heal up. The Ignite is down for Jarvan. Now, will they get baited by the summoning heal? Because a low HP Kagama is very enticing, but he did level up. The Nivea's top going for the cannon. He uses the seal. Will he survive? Uh, no. No, because he was a big greedy <laughs> game for the wicked kill. <laughs> If he'd stayed under the tower, he would have been fine, but he wanted to get that last shuriken off onto Renekton. And as a result, Froggen gets first blood. You can't make greedy plays like that, especially because Froggen wasn't going to let him get nearby. The cooldowns on the Navy are actually fairly short, so that was enough. And the, the twist advance under the tower is going to be enough damage between that brand combo. Will the Navy finish him off? Yes. You barely, but bust. Nocturne is there. Dust Fox ready just to melt that bird, but she gets away. Movement speed buff from his trail, not quite enough to catch up with the boots on Anivia, even though she is one of the slowest characters in the game with that base move speed of 300. Mm -hmm. Who is it? Who is it? Lulu, Anivia, and is Fiddlesticks 300? Uh, I'm not sure, I haven't played him in too long. Malkai's base is 
Is it 300 or 305? I think he's a little faster. But bottom lane as, uh, let's see, Ultra Cross CS is going bottom lane 20 to 30. Jarvan is not doing particularly well, and he does have a creep wave built up, but he just can't deal with Kog'Maw at this point. If he goes in for him, he's going to lose that fight just because Kog'Maw deals too much damage. This might work on, say, an Ash, but right now the, the output on Kog'Maw is just too high. Dust Fox going on to Wicked up top right now. And we just kind of dashes out of there very quickly before anything can happen. Which was good play by him, and smart. You need to be aggressive, you need to be fast. Dust Force, or Dust Fox really needing his boots to get away and into these fights. Prombar took a lot of harass from Kog'Maw, and it's just what's going to keep happening. He's got Gang forming in mid again as well. Double buff from him already. Going in onto Limelight and Snoopy hiding off in the wings, level 5 with no buffs. And he's not really going to need it if he can land this snare down. Just waiting on Limelight to come in range. Snoopy doesn't Snoop have it. flash. It's coming out and even though the stun misses, takes one CS for his trouble and carries on walking. He was he was willing to die for that trade because he assists gold and the fact that an if you're getting kills is terrifying would have been well worth it. Now, look how well warded top is. There is no aggression to happen on Wicked from anywhere but the lane. And the jungle is also safe. There's actually just a lot of good map coverage in general. Uh, CLG has every entrance covered to the, in the jungles, and uh, straight to the top has decent coverage, but not quite the same level as CLG, but they don't really need it as much if they're playing defensively. Two to one, mate. That's seven minutes. In, very different game to what we've been seeing so far. A lot of aggression mm -hmm. early on. It was not uncommon for us to not see a single kill by this point so far, but that's what happens when you put a Jarvan in a bot lane with Jan, uh, Jana. Would Leona not have been a better choice by any chance? Jarvan Leona is a weird lane in that it was very, very popular in the United States uh, from the team Goose, or MTW now. And it name. worked. Well, it, it's actually a portrait of Goose is their full name, and I like the full name. Because it's kind of silly. Yeah. But. <laughs> Like part, but the problem uh, was teams figured them out. They figured out how they could deal with it, and a lot of it was actually more of a playstyle difference rather than a uh, composition difference. Some compositions were just bad against it, but with the right ganks and the right timings with those ganks, it became very very hard for Goose to do a lot of good things. Uh, Yellow Pete taking a lot of damage from Prom Bear now, but he's just gonna be able to walk out of that. The exhaust coming down from Soraka, keeping him in place. Saying Jarvan, don't kill my Kogma. But Goose just, they ran into issues where people figured them out too much. And also they've had a lot of team changes. The Dust Fox is out, back coming into mid onto Frog and a bit ballsy, if Frog still got egg, Dust Fox does get out of there before the tower does a bit too much damage. They're going to get what they can in under the tower, but Limelight pays for it with a lot of his own health. Now Snoopy's chasing him down, does get stunned for his trouble, nice ult goes out from Brand, gets a couple of bounces off, hits Frog and twice in fact. Too the much. creep wave showed up at the perfect time to earn that ult. But um, anyhow, just to finish off the Dragon Leona thing, uh, it, it's more mostly that if you time a gank well on the bot lane, and if Dragon Leona doesn't work, it up, work out early, they fall behind a ton and they get kind of worthless. And you have a farm carry versus a not farm Jarvan, and it just gets worse and worse as the game goes on. Though I do like experiments in laning, there's always a chance to go ahead and change up the meta. There's no reason to always have support AD go bottom. And you'll notice in a lot of tournaments, they actually change it up quite a bit. Sometimes they'll go top and sort of switch later for the dragon fights. Sometimes we'll see some weird double jungle things. Wicked ults. Ults, flashes, dashes, stuns, fart. Pops a combo and leaves it at that. So, Wicked <laughs> wants to leave that lane. Needs to get it nice and pushed. As Fart says, ooh, in chat. That was, I think that was an accident from Wicked, because that old. I mean. An accident was an accident. Kind of, yeah, I think he, well, he ulted on accident. Like, well, what do I do now? <laughs> I'll just flash it and try to kill him. Fair enough. <laughs> and it's like, have you ever seen a TF who uses his ult but can't really go anywhere? Just like, ult like five feet away? Might as well? <laughs> I've been that TF a couple of times, yeah. <laughs> Just 
alt from one side of the lane to the other a couple of times over. <laughs> I've done that. I'm gonna gank bottom. Oh, there's like four nocturnes down there. Just gonna go back to my tower, which is right next to me. <laughs> we do have. Oh, nocturne was waiting down bottom to try and help Cronberry out a little bit more. Did decide to back away. Stupid. Hmm. Looking to do the same thing. Not sure whether it will come from that. We do have Pronbert making his way towards this mid lane. Remember, there's no egg on a Nibia. If, if she gets ulted, she should flash out of it and be able to escape, actually. Uh, quick question, what do you think of Telefrags with TFL? I think it would be a good mechanic. Um... Yeah, um... <laughs> I, I would just say yes and roll with it. <laughs> sure, we'll give it a go. the best thing. We get something a bit of a... <laughs> yeah, whatever I do. You better move out of those cards. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we'll wait and see. Right, I've got plenty of things in store. I mean, there's a graphics update coming soon, TM. <laughs> <laughs> we do have Snoopy approaching mid now with this red buff up. Oh, he's actually just going to go for a counter jungle on the race before he does anything towards Brand. Take his down. And in, in Riot's defense, that they actually do a lot of graphic updates just very, very slowly. Snoopy in mid, trying to do some damage, is under the tower. Oh, uh, that was weird. It was weird. Snoopy may actually pay for this with his life. He does. The kill goes to Bran thanks to that ignite. And, uh, hmm. I'm a little bit confused by that. Does not seem to be like everything's going to plan for COG at the moment. Snoopy doing that. Wicked accidental ult up top. There's some aggression going bottom between Yellow P and Prom Bear. Yellow P in the cage. He's going to die to Jarvan. Can he finish him off with his passive? Yeah. Looks like it. And we're going to chase on to Nif. The fear coming out from Nocturne. He's got no other mana left. The exhaust now that the fear has progged. He's flashing under the tower. Nicely done from Jana. Tanking it. And the kill will go to Nocturne. And in fact, Froggen died mid as well. So Limelight doing very, very well there. Very well played there, actually. The gold difference is still 800 gold. And top's going to take a lot of damage right now because Farth got pushed out of lane. But... That was that was a bad one. That was even on purpose. But it's very interesting. There was there had to be a miscommunication on CLG with that mid dive because Snoop had dived right onto Brand, and it was actually kind of weird because Brand flashed away, but the root did not actually move towards him as it normally does. It will normally follow through a flash. Instead, it just kind of stopped right there, and he actually should have died under the tower much sooner. But still, it was just a weird dive that didn't make a lot of sense, and it. CLG ended up paying for it, and Nif disconnecting. Now, I believe at this point in the game, it's too late to actually go ahead and remake, so yeah. this I is not good for CLG. See, he flashed before he died there, and he ran back towards his tower before he died, so his DC is not the reason for getting killed under that tower, I don't think. He was fighting in bot lane still. Yeah, he was still responsive for that. He's DC'd since then. Now, I know the players, since the last changes, the players don't know about that until the five minutes afterwards. We get it as soon as it happens, I suspect. So. Yeah, that, w that was one of the first things. And that's, that's not good for CLG. I mean, Soraka, she is the support, but she is an, an important support. She is going to need to keep Pogma alive, need to shield against that Jarvan damage, because Jarvan... Uh, that's all he is right now. If you look at, it, at his inventory, he's got a lot of swords. And he does not need a whole lot to really start pumping out that damage thanks to his uh, uh, passive. Okay, Nif does come back. Good, good. I, I, I went to see a game just snowball out of control because CLG had a disconnect. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Right. Thank you, you have some a worse person to disconnect. <laughs> And uh, let's wait and see. There's no pause, guys. This is not tournament servers, which sucks. But one of these days, maybe the next update to spectate mode, because we still got drop-in spectator mode. It's apparently on the way. So I don't know. Maybe we'll come in with that. If you would like to see uh, pause, get into your game sooner, please write your local congressman and ask Riot Games <laughs> to put spectate mode into their game. Oh yeah, if enough people spammed uh, Riot. And their congressman on Twitter. I'm sure it happened. 
We do have CLG. Actually, CLG bringing Wicked down from top, making a play for Dragon, despite Froggen not being here. And Wicked trading or trying to trade with Brand in mid is going to make that even harder. They need to uh, kind of spread their advantage around. So Wicked was very strong top lane. Now they need to move around to make sure that the other lanes are going well. And uh, actually, just a quick note about uh, why there is no spectator mode. So League of Legends started as a very, very small game. They did not expect to grow so quickly. There were a lot of growing pains with this game. One is that, one of them is that the basis of the coding is kind of rusty and was not really uh, set up for things like spectator mode. So Adobe Air had to get updated, and they just had to—they're working at it slowly and trying to bring it into the scope that they wanted to. But just their origins were fairly humble, and because of that, they did not have the proper setup for spectator mode and a lot of features. Yeah. Dragon is interrupted by straight to the top, and CLG does not have it, but they still want to go for it, even though there is five people here for straight to the top, and only four for CLG. We have that all coming up from Nocturne. Yellow Pete's going to be the target. Jarvan's still not quite joining the fight yet. Now he arrives just as Fart pops that ultimate. And Soraka is instantly nuked down by Pron Bear's combo. He wasn't even, like, he hadn't even landed again after doing his EQ combo before he cast that ult. And it blew Soraka up. Now straight to the top of trying this dragon, but Nocturne's pretty low. It's being tanked by Brand. It's going to drop down. The smite comes out from Snoopy. And, uh, He's going to pay for it with his life, but not before he takes Nocturne out. Wicked and Froggen are still left up. Now chasing it down. The Hex Drinker from Wicked keeps him up from that brand and fart damage. And we are still looking at them chase down. CLG get the dragon for the cost of three members. Nith, can, uh, sorry, Nith, Yellow Pete and Snoopy. In fact, they're still chasing Wicked. Jarvan's going to pay for it with his life. And that's Ooh. not a very good trade at all for straight to the top. They lost Nocturne and Jarvan. So a, a two for three trade what is or a three for two trade is fine if you get Dragon. And since the rest of straight to the top is not going to be able to take objectives, that was fine for CLG. It really should have gone better for straight to the top. They got a bit aggressive at the end, and the Dragon going to CLG is just very very. That's a thousand gold. It's hard to deal with, and they need to get that smite. Lime Knight was just hiding in that bush, waiting to jump onto Wicked. He didn't quite have the ability power, or Wicked had a little bit too much ma 106 magic. If Wicked had too much, the Lime Knight to really burst him down, despite his full combo ultimate included being used up. And uh, Nif just came in and went, mm, You're taking some damage. I'll give you one little heal, and we'll walk on our way. That Mal 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 Malamortis. Malmortis. Malmortius? Malmortius. More of Malmortius. <sighs> that is quite a name. Yes, that I don't know who made it. Malmortius out. really is a, a handy item for these AD bruisers that want to you know, beef up against characters like Nivea, characters like Brand. A Mal Malmortius Mal only game would be very, very unfun to play against if you were the one caster in it. <laughs> <laughs> Insightful commentary. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, just, it's it's kind of scary for Street to the Top, but at the same time, they can still do a lot of damage. Uh, Wicked's going to be hard to deal with, but they do have AD Cannon, who will be able to do quite a bit of damage. And how much armor does Wicked actually have? Well, 131, 231 so he still has a lot of that heal from Nif. <laughs> Have not been ulting into mid, going in onto Froggen, who still has his egg up again, and Snoopy sharing his face is enough to make straight to the top change their mind. Mm -hmm. They do not like but, sticking uh, in one lane. The people are just kind of just moving around all over the place right now. Jarvan's a bot lane against the Janna. I'm assuming Jarvan went back. Um, Renekton's there too, and just like people are just moving around all over the place because. It's just keeping lanes very, very chaotic and making it hard to actually be somewhere because if you're getting countered, you gotta move. But um, what's gonna help quite a bit is the fact that Jarvan does have armor penetration on his Q. 26% isn't a whole lot and it only lasts for 3 seconds, but it's gonna be enough to really have an effect, especially for the AD Cannon, who does not have fantastic steroids on his own. 
And also, AD Cannon will be very, very protected from Wicked with the CC he provides himself. Which is nice, but... He, they don't really need to kill Wicked, they need to kill Yellow P and Froggen. And on the subject of killing Yellow P, there's a, a Gatorman going up top. Yellow P does die to the chain CC of Bran and Cannon. Fart just taking the hit and just standing up with his wriggles. And so you're doing it too to now. Say it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing it all along. I've actually been trying to turn away from the microphone. <laughs> oh dear. I know I'm going to get hated in this for chat, but I want CLG to lose just so we can see Fart again in the final. <laughs> <laughs> the Fart will rise to the screen. <laughs> fart will go on. That's why oh, My team got carried by a Fart. <laughs> Man. Infinite, infinite you comedy value. Let's wait and see. At the moment, CLG are f about 3,400 gold in the lead. Let's see. Has he got any AP yet? Yeah, let's see how he's building. He's got his cages lucky pick. He's two hot, three GP5, sorry. And that tier and giant spell. How rich is he? 7,500. He's the richest in the game by quite a way. Like Brand doing well in the lane, he's not quite there. And CLG just shoving straight to the top back off that mid tower, just grouping up a bit faster than these guys were expecting, and shoving that down quickly, and then dispersing back to their lanes. 2400 gold on Anivia, so Froggen's waiting for something, and he's going back to base right now. Let's see what pops up at the bottom of the screen, because he should be able to afford anything he needs a Phyllis Stone and a Warmog's armor. Alright. All right, so we got we Anivia will not die anymore. No, that's no longer an option for Anivia. Uh, but with that tank, like you want to dive on Anivia, so I understand the tankiness just because your skills are just really good straight up without any changes. And it looks like straight to the top might go for Baron because Kogma and Sorok are bot lane. They do spot a ward and may, that may stop them. Especially but CLG the should be worried about Baron at this point. Yeah, they've got this Jarvan, who's got a Wriggles up, they've got Kennen with a Wriggles up, they've got Nocturne with, sorry no, Nocturne with a Wriggles up, and Kennen with a Wriggles up, Jarvan doesn't, yeah, he's still got... But Jarvan does have a very good Baron passive. Yes, he does, so there's still a lot of damage there. So they should go keep an eye on it, and they must keep it warded as much as they can, Wicked drops another one as he runs past. And Pronto oh, going a little bit too very, deep. He gets snared up, and that's half health and his flash burnt. Jana had to burn hers too. They need to back off unless they want to. They're going to go for a fight, but this may work out against them as they're already down low on their health and lacking a flash. We'll wait and see how COG play it. COG got the last dragon. So, wow, very quick. Oh, comes out from Nocturne, goes straight in onto Froggen at the front side. Snoopy snares in onto Prombear at the down the back. We've got Kennen Fart right in the middle of everything, channeling that ultimate. We can't quite get any damage out. Jarvan melts his ult onto Yellow P, who is still going. Kaiti the back takes out Jana. Dustbox coming in with that fear will drop before it even finishes channel. Limelight, the last member left up, being chased out by Wicked the whole way. Snoopy actually flashing over the wall to land that snare, land that knockback, and Froggen will pick up the ace. Not a good initiation from straight to the top. Nocturne goes in there and just dies. Because of that Anivia wall, because of the fact that you have to go through her Nectin and Maokai to get to her now, they just can't dive like that. Unfortunately, they don't realize they didn't realize how tanky Anivia was. Right now they probably do, but for that fight, Anivia had let's see, about on her. She has about twenty seven or twenty eight hundred HP. She probably had about twenty six fifty for that fight. And that's just too much to go through. They, they didn't even get to egg her. So, I mean, CLG didn't lose anything. That initiation was just too aggressive, just too jumpy. They needed to be more patient and just wait for that perfect opportunity. Because when they're behind, just aggressive initiation isn't going to work. Especially because a lot of their initiation is going to be on Kennen, who does not have his own use because he's built AD. See, that's actually the weakest thing about AD Kennen for me. You, you don't get Zonius. So you cannot use your ult as an initiation tool. I've seen Genja do it. They had a really strong game. He went three Doran's Berserker Greaves. And then he went so flawless and so rich. The next thing he bought was a Zonius, just because he could afford it outright. <laughs> but that's Genja. And that wasn't in the game quite. And as soon as that ult went out from Dust Fox, 
the inevitable went up behind him. So not only was it a bad initiative in the first place, is the rest of his team just got cut off straight away. Mm -hmm. like they're all like all popping their heads above, and going, "Hey, what's going on over there, Nocturne? What you doing over there?" Has Nocturne just cried? Cried out for help. Looking over the fence at Nocturne next door. <laughs> <laughs> Let's wait and see. COG up by 10,000 gold. There <laughs> 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 you are. Around, around this barren pen, they're keeping it cleared out, making sure there's nothing there and waiting. Nif's had this oracle for a while. And more and more support starting to go triple TP5s now. Mm -hmm. Realising that KG's lucky pick really is worth it. Well, do they need a reverie? I think is the question, because Reverie's that big first support item for most supports. And does Soraka need the Reverie? Not really, they have one on Maokai already, they already have a lot of control, they don't really need to initiate right now, so they're good. And does Straight to the Top need a Reverie? Kind of, they have uh, Nocturne for initiation, when they move in, they use skills rather than just normal moving in, so it's not as important. So I can understand the triple GP5, because yes don't need that reverie right now. It's going to be great to have later because it's an amazing item, but it's not integral to their team. It looks like CLG is going to try and bait out this Baron. Um, there are a few brush checking skills such as Jarvan's Flag and Ken's Q that should keep them safe, but a good catch will give CLG the Baron. Froggen baiting with, him, with himself because he knows he will not die. Ooh, not the best wall in the world. Which is surprising, come from the problem. Normally very, very common to see that, but straight to the top, very split up. Nocton going in way too deep again onto Froggen. Gets blown up almost instantly by Wicked. Nice knock up from Jarvan, keeping them off of him. But Jana will fall. Dust Force facing, Dust Fox, sorry, facing down onto Snoopy. Fart still going. Froggen chasing down Dust Fox. Just the ignite is enough to kill it. Fart still running. Brand fell. Jarvan is off the round towards the blue side, and CLG, again, they've barely even lost any health. Mm -hmm. Yellow feet got very low, but just the nature of CLG's team is, is control. They don't have a lot of straight-up CCs, but they have so many slows, area denial. And when you go through these areas that they're trying to keep you out of, you're going you're gonna to take a lot of damage. You're going to die just from all the damage you're doing with the Nivea, from all the CC coming out from Maokai. So it's just too much lane control, too much tech control, the Kog'Maw slow, everything's about making sure that if you go for that Kog'Maw, if you go for that Nivea, you will get there so beaten, beaten, so beaten and bruised, you will die. And straight to the top isn't uh, dealing with it, they're just trying to go straight on in, which is what they want from CLG. If you just go in, they'll kill you. He's getting caught by Jaina, but his sapling's just dealing a ton of damage. He's got a straight nose back as well, which is another reason that Soraka didn't need. And finally, uh, Nivea is getting some AP. And there's an 800 mana stacked Archangels now finished on her. She's gone from almost nothing to 183. And how much gold is she sitting on? 2100. Next item, I can see coming from Frog on the way she's built. Waiting until about 3,400, selling a GP5 and buying a death cap straight up. From my Frog and Nivea experience, I have a feeling... And there was a different. there was a very brief Baron attempt, but uh, Frog and kind of cancelled that out. He's going to catch Janna here. She should... Well, he just doesn't have enough uh, AP, but his build's working out for him, I can understand it, so... He won't get that kill, but he's won the, won the war, in a sense. Lose Janna battle, win the... Jana War. I guess that kind of makes sense. No. Yeah. No. Did Jana get another Oracles? No. So two Oracles is the limit. Oh, she did. She just drinks it. Look As right I finish saying that. Thank you. Uh, three Oracles now bought, at least for Jana, let alone the rest of the team. And Nif still carrying his trusty one. All 
the way from the start of the game. And there's CV out for straight to the top. They see CLG going straight in on this barren area. A very, very straightforward game, if you will. <laughs> so, they're going to try and go for this Baron, but Froggen's just going to wall them out. And they might actually be able to turn around and kill this Fox before the fight goes in. Nocturne ults to the back to try and steal the Baron, but Snoopy and COG have too much experience with Nocturnes. And it has way too much health on it for him to do that, and they will pick it up as soon as he's dead. But, going to do what he can to Froggen before the fight really gets going. Froggen. Are you going to get egged? Not quite. In the back, he's still going on a tiny sliver of health. We'll get on to Pronbear. He drops to Ignite. Jana's already dead. Fart and Limelight are still on the run. One more ult from Kogma will finish off Brand and Fart. Once more, it's the last little gaseous ball running away from this entire CLG team. GG well played. It was a good game. CLG just... Well, they really come in strong. They play so elegantly. And... Straight to the top, they tried, they did not adapt to the team composition from CLG though. They just played it as if they could dive in there, and they did have very divey characters, but CLG had a team composed of anti-dive. If you 